it is a sad moment. We are going to upload the final episode of the ontological imperative. And then last Saturday, John Renzenbrink passed away. He was 94. He was a giant figure in American environmental politics, a co-founder of the U.S. Green Party, a very decent being, and I was privileged to cross paths with him. And the following last part of the documentary is uh, a result of one of those meetings. That meeting was short, a few days in St. Louis, confined to a simple situation. But that's all there is left in my archives with John. And uh, although I am sad that he is gone and um, I regret I didn't have a chance to do more with him, I'm glad I have what I have. You can't, you, you can't, you can't defeat the master by using the master's tools. Using his, his well said. You can't defeat the master by using the master's tools, which is what Bernie Sanders is doing, is what all those guys have done. There was an interview a few years ago uh, with John, conducted by Tom Putnam. And in that interview, uh, there was a quote, and the, the quote came from John's latest book, and the quote went like that. In contemplating the fact that I will not live forever, I feel life's call. It's not only the trees that need help, but life itself is severely threatened. Not just in me or in those dear to me, but life itself may be extinguished in the human species as a whole, my species, the one I belong to. End of quote. The ontological imperative arises from the same concern. Here we go with its last installment. So it's perverse that human beings of the last uh, several thousand years, maybe, have practiced their life as if somehow or other they are separate. Yeah. As it's, 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 it's amazing to me but how that could be. And it, it's infiltrated all professions yeah. and uh, politics certainly as well. Yeah. You ask them, well, do you know how a bill gets through Congress? Who is your congressional representative? I wouldn't, and most I wouldn't, people just, I, 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 I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask that. I yeah. would ask, what are your needs? How can I help you with your needs? Yeah. That, would, that would get their attention. And then they might get interested in those political niceties. Uh, uh, most, people are absolutely, most people are absolutely ignorant about the questions that you're asking. Absolutely. Even candidates, I know a favorite thing of reporters, for example, is that, what is your congressman? to the candidate, and they stutter and they don't know themselves, which is, and they go away gleeful. Well, is that really the most important question? No. The most important question is the paradigm of really respecting people in their world view life, in their, in their world life. You say the categorical imperative is too ethical. Yeah, it's too concentrating on the ethical and the anthropomorphic. Yeah, I guess I want to define the realm of the ethical to get away from the anthropomorphic anthropocentrism oh, no, part. No. And, and I guess what I would want to say is that emphasis on the community uh, makes ethics possible rather than eliminates it, which, oh, which is okay. what I, the way I, see I, it. I think that's a very good clarification. I, I agree with you. You don't want to, I'm not booting ethics out the window, but I'm saying in terms of the priority of, well, in, of human understanding but of the in, world, ontology is primary. Right. I'm not, I'm okay with that. Okay. And, and on Kant's view, he's got that dualism between noumena and phenomena. Oh, yeah, of course. And that's where the, I think the problems come in. Of course. It you know, yeah. It's so amazing to me because uh, they have never discovered motherhood. They've never, <laughs> they don't understand having babies. They, they, they talk about the woman as being very, 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 very valuable. But they miss the whole point that the mother and the, and the, and the, and the, and, and, and the, and the reproduction of life through the mother is uh, an ipso facto 
basic understanding that we are all already related. Yeah, yeah but see... And, 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 excuse me, one more point. The question is not whether we are related, but how we are going to relate. May, here's just an idea. Uh, rather than say, I am related to you, we are all related, why not go back to that idea we talked about just a little few days ago in that workshop, is that within us, there's a bunch of different perspectives. But is it not the case, or would you not agree perhaps, that that configuration of internal relations in your thinking, the, the presuppositions, the biases, they are shaped in a, in a community where you pick up the biases and language and language and categories from a community, so you're interrelated with the wider community in that way. Well, that's, try, that's maybe a better way of saying what I'm trying to say. It's not that I'm a part of a community, but I am a community. Yeah. I, I am a community within a community. Yeah. Okay, and if you... And how do you make the jump between the two? Well, let me just... That's do, still a re, 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 reinterpretation of the same damn thing. Here's the self, and then there are the others. And well, that's what I'm trying to get away from. I, I know you are. You yeah. know I'm saying? You're slipping back into it again. Well... These are games that really happen today because it's Sunday. So they play the afternoon. In my introduction to philosophy class, we do one day on Charles Darwin. Yep. And I share with them the buffalo theory. The buffalo herd can only go as, move as fast as the slowest members. Yep. And so if there's weak or sick members, it can only go as fast as those weak and sick members. But predators will prey on those sick and weak members and eliminate the slowest ones, and that improves the health of the herd and makes them faster and that sort of thing. And, and something similar happens when you drink alcohol, because alcohol kills brain cells, but it kills the slowest brain cells and so that's why you feel smarter after two beers and so the students you know by the time they get to the test like, oh darwin did the buffalo theory <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna screw up things you know. that's, that's, really terrific. that's why i tell them it's a joke <laughs> Don't sweat the small stuff. That's what I said. And the answer to that is, it's all small stuff. Right. <laughs> it's all small stuff. It's all small stuff. Well, you, what's interesting in the brain, brain injury stuff, I don't know how I learned how to read. Those things were harder for me to relearn because I couldn't remember learning them. You are open to the world in a way that most of us are not. I've always known I was different, yeah. like yeah, three years way. old. Oh, okay. But, but I have no words for it. No, of course not, we don't. You know? We still might not have the best vocabulary exactly. to well, understand that. Well, is so inefficient and, uh, and, or, and inaccurate. And ac in, but you know, inadequate. A, but the thing is also, words are very important. They are, and how you say what you say, oh. and what words you use. And so we need words. And to communicate. Mm. Yeah. We're a word species. Oh, yeah. Recently, the three of us, the four of us, we went to a museum here in St. Louis, and they had a traveling exhibit of Nazi propaganda yeah. using words and language and rhetoric. It was so spellbindingly effective in brainwashing a whole country. <laughs> So words are double-edged. Oh, absolutely. Words are uh, double-edged all the way through. I just don't know there's something about this conversation that I'm not sure of. Aren't you making this whole thing about retrieving how you did something and how you came to do something? Aren't you sort of becoming too rational about it? I told her she's analytical. And then a little I overthink things. And what is wrong with well, that? Everything! How often we confuse successful rhetoric and persuading people to our point of view with 
dialogue. What I'm offering here for you folks to think about, and me too, is can we really, really figure out how we can talk with people and not just to them? That's really crucial to me. I mean, otherwise dialogue is just vapor. Um, we are not, I feel we are, we just really rely upon marvelous talking and persuasion and what I call rhetoric. And rhetoric is an honorable thing, but it can get out of hand if, it's not, if it loses its context in dialogue. So I'm pleading for awareness that the campaigns that we have are rooted in the thought of having dialogue and at the same time recognizing that under circumstances you need to lard it up a little bit with persuasive talk. And that's very interesting because it lapses into uh, another thing that a, 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 a pet peeve I have after listening to the Democrats and Republicans for umpteen decades. And that is they will always, always say, this is what I'm going to do for you. This is what I'm going to do for you. This is what I'm going to do for you. And it all is just a lot of bullshit. I just react very strongly to the word masses. I think it's a huge mistake. The left has made that mistake again and again. And that's why we don't reach the people. We, we view them as, in a general sense as the masses. We have to, we have, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to emphasize here, among other things, is to treat people as individually respectful people. I'll take that to University Boulevard. Yeah. So if you okay. just follow this up here where you cross the railroad, okay. I think you come out on University Boulevard. Oh, and, well. And it, it was over here off of uh, West Coruscant Avenue. That is a little confusing. And they have Ferguson <laughs> Avenue here. It is time that we stand up as allies in solidarity with the black communities around this country. The whole damn system is guilty as hell. The whole damn system is guilty as hell. That's right. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. So we have a country who is in the business of manufacturing criminals. So as a presidential contender, I would tell you that if I was the next president of the United States, first thing I'd do is order my attorney general to start looking into violations of the Eighth Amendment for all these excessive fines here in Ferguson. When Plato in the Republic says that the good is beyond being, and one might argue, as Plotinus did, that the good that is beyond being is the union of being and becoming. Whoa. Yeah. You're, you're in the realm, you, you get outside the cave, and you look around, and it looks uh, unbelievable and yeah. beautiful. But then the interesting thing, of course, to talk about being and becoming, then he has to go back down the cave. Right, yeah. 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 See, this one died at 94 with 76 years of vocation, so she started at 18. You 
usually this happens, that happens, or you this way or that way. But in the end, when you die, you're the one who's dying. Nobody else is. Nobody right. Yes. You're the one who's dying. And that's a very important question to, 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 to pose because I, all the different voices I have that uh, stand for me in different ways and different are all dependent upon my life. If you look over there, there's a strikingly beautiful, well-shaped woman. Uh, I wonder what it's like to be such a good-looking woman. Uh, well, it has its down, upsides and downsides. Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm sure it means a lot of hassle with a lot of people, a lot of men, yeah. uh, a lot of... Oh. And yet, you know, one of those anomalies, uh, the way I, I noticed it also in the ballpark, just the way women dress is just unbelievable. You know, really sexy yeah. in a way that's almost flaunting, but it's not meant that way. Right. Safe trip back and safe trip coming. Didn't we do a good job? We did. We did a marvelous job. Marvelous job. Yeah, we do a very good job. And so we say farewell to this magnificent campus until some other planetary existence will reveal itself unto us. Who knows? Mm -hmm.